to fight the Abyss, one must know it. Greetings, ladies and laddies, and welcome back to the realms of this cursed city. In today's episode of our speed painting series, we're going to paint the knowledgeable scholar Octran Glimscry, who is allegedly here to support Darok and his companions on their quest to overthrow Raduka and his minions. As you might have noticed from the thumbnail, I'm not gonna paint Octrin in the Color Scheme Games Workshop proposed, as I think that it is quite dark, depressing, and more than anything, quite boring. So instead, I might try to spice it up a bit, and make him look like a proper good guy mage. In other words, what are we waiting for? First off, we'll start on the ropes with a rich, saturated blue. I want to use this as a canvas to paint a night sky, with lots of stars on it. Maybe it even changes constantly, showing different skies of worlds and realms far beyond. Who knows with a wizard? To paint stars quickly and effectively, take a brush like this one and bend the bristles like so. Combined with some white paint, we are basically just flinging the paint at the rope in random patterns and sizes, quickly achieving the stars that we want. This technique is very messy and hard to control by design though, which is why I wanted to do all of this at the start, where we don't have to worry about the other parts. The only real drawback is that I don't know how the wash will affect these stars, but I guess that's a problem for the future. <laughs> Done with his robe, we take a dark grey with a slight tint of blue to it, and start painting his hood. Painting dark colours over a white primer can be just as challenging as painting bright colours over a black primer, and in this case right here, we definitely need a second coat to cover everything up nicely. Having the cloth done, we take a pastel brown and paint up the wooden staff that he's leaning on. This is quite easy for the most part, but you definitely need to avoid the night sky robe. Octran features a lot of hidden details that are quite hard to spot, but when we turn him just right... There, do you catch that? We can see another squirrel case hidden under his robes. It is a bit easier to spot from the other side, but most of the cast is just completely hidden. And now comes the real challenge. Picking up some burgundy and a small brush, we have to navigate it around his beard and the already painted stuff and carefully paint the hidden detail. The end on the other side is uh, thankfully not as hard to reach. Since we're already on the perusals he's carrying, let's take a few fun colors and make them stand out. There's really nothing you can't do here, so just pick any colors that you like. After the covers are done, we take a light beige and paint their pages, as well as the paper scroll on his back. For the belt holding it in place, I used a dark mustard yellow, which I also used for the handles of the scroll. Now it's our time to get fancy. Taking a true metallic gold, we pick out all of the ornaments, not only on the scroll, but also on the books he's holding. If you really want to know it, you can even pick out these finest lines with it. A tip for doing this is to angle the brush, and use the flanks of the bristles to put down the paint. Of course you don't have to use gold, silver works just as well. Again, just do what you like here. While we are at it, we can also pick out the small trinket on his staff. Being in trend with our modern day real life, he wears a half mask on his face, for which I used an orange bronze. Then we paint the beard in a light grey, and also give him a very pale skin tone. The only thing left is the orb on his staff, which I decided to use a pale orange. All of the base colors are now fully applied, and I think the color scheme checks out so far, 
definitely staying true to my very rough concept. The only thing that's really missing is depth, as for now he's looking rather flat. But that's not a big problem now, is it? Take a big brush and quickly apply a coat of black wash on our wizard. I always think of these steps like some kind of reward, as there's usually not that much to look out for and we can swing the brush just to our heart's content. When all of the mini is covered, we can use the time efficiently and paint up his base, laying the foundation with our trusted texture paint still and mud. As soon as the base is fully covered, we just dab some mustard yellow in random spots onto the base and dry brush some light beige over it. After that, we only have to paint our cobblestones as we usually do and finish the speed paint by painting the trim in a smooth pitch black. In just one evening of painting, we got another hero of the Cursed City box set to a game and table ready standard. Even though his cast is very simple, and Octran is probably the least exciting character of the bunch, I'm really happy with what we achieved here, especially compared to his classic paint job, although this might be just my personal opinion. But I said we're gonna spice it up today, and for now, Octran looks rather bland. So I will use the next few minutes to show you guys a few extra, but completely optional steps to take this bookworm to the next level. The first thing that comes to mind is his robe. The wash dulled down the stars quite a bit, so we, really unfortunately, have to sprinkle some new ones onto it. This time I took a smaller brush, hoping I could minimize the spread and collateral damage, but honestly, I'm fairly certain that I somehow managed to sprinkle more on any other part of the model but the robe, which is just great. <sighs> okay. Next, we want to give the robe more highlights. For this, we take a light blue and catch all of the heavy folds the cloth throws, as well as the lowest edge on the ground. Leaving the robe alone for now, we turn back to his hood and paint the top facing part with the original base color again. This is not only good to get rid of those nasty white spots, but also helps with the overall lighting on the mini. While I did that, I also noticed how the paint washed away some of the white dots, instead of covering them up. So I took a well moistened brush next, and just swept it over the tainted areas. Okay, now we can continue with the real highlighting. Just as we did with the night sky robe before, we take the legendary blue tinted medium dark grey, and pick out all of the folds as well as the sharp edges. After the hood too is fully highlighted, we do the same with a light grey on the beard. Just as with the fine ornaments on the book, you'll make your life a lot easier when you angle the brush when highlighting. Next off, we pick a light beige to highlight the pages of the books. You don't necessarily need such a fine brush as I'm using here, I just use it so you guys can see better. As always, just do what you're comfortable with. What I do use this brush for though, is to paint a little bit of writing on this one paper. Moving on to the orb embedded in his cane, we take a bright orange to reinforce the washed base color, and then take a bright yellow to enhance its glow. Almost at the finishing line, we come back to where we started. For the last touch, you might want to think about giving your Starry Night a few extra white drops to have some very bright stars standing out. If you want to, you can even add very fine streaks in four directions to get this classic blinking effect. The last thing I did was to again plant a pair of bushes onto the base before calling this paint job officially done. And here he is. Octren Glimpscry, the ominous scholar accompanying our heroes in a more good guy color scheme. Honestly, all this time I anticipated Octren to be very easy to paint, 
as he is mostly just two flat surfaces and a beard. But, oh boy, to paint this old man takes a lot more tricks than you might imagine. If you're following me along on this project with your own miniatures at home, you will have two out of nine heroes of the Cursed City box set done. Ready to face the 51 antagonists we previously painted. As always, I have a full guide in the description of the video, listing the exact paints that are used for this paint job. And should you have any questions, maybe a couple of suggestions, be my guests and share them in the comments section. Octrin is undoubtedly a vital asset to the heroes in their quest against Raluca and his court, as he knows their nature and weak points like the back of his hand. In battle, though, he's using his magic rather hesitantly, fulfilling more of a supporting role. If you want to see some real damage, delivered by the flaming wrath of light and heaven, you're better off with Salona Zeitengale. She's probably one of my favorite characters to play in the game, but more importantly, she'll be the object of our next episode. And if you would like to see her paint job, as well as the other heroes of the Cursed City box set, feel free to hit the subscribe button. As I am really looking forward to seeing you again in my next video. Until then, take care. So, you know how I said that the color scheme by Games Workshop didn't really fit into the whole uh, hero-magician kind of theme? And it was like kind of dark and depressing and yeah, it's just not really fitting? Well, I just read a little more about the law. hang on. I just read a little bit more in the law, and, um, and I found a few things out about good old Doctrine. He was the member of a secret cult, which goal was to lift the secret of immortality by using the dark arts. His colleague and friend is no other than Torgilius the Chamberlain, and he says himself that he doesn't know that if they encounter the two, if he will fight them, or if he should join them. Well, um, in front of that background, I don't know if I would have stuck to my hero outfit, you know, magician, like, fancy robe and stars and everything, shimmering lights, good guy. Um, or if I would have gone more like this way. But, um, yeah, that's up to you, I think. So, <laughs> in this video, you got presented the good guy auction, and if you would... Like, maybe go a little more law accurate, you would probably go more like this or uh, like this. But um, that's up to you, so just do whatever you like best. See you in the next video.